pocket. That'll make it better. Probably not next to the credit card, right? Okay, so you can hear me now? All right. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah. So, um, I, okay, a little practice? Okay. So, uh, how do I sound? Does it sound okay? Did you get my watch in the picture? I've got a new watch. Yeah. I enjoy it, yeah. Okay. Okay, so I'll introduce you real quick, Chris. Do you want me to stand aside and then you just I kind of walk over? Okay. But you know what? Amy had that title slide, even though you didn't have it in here. So in the recorded version, I'll still be there. Just... What makes it really comfortable is my boss's boss is here, so, you know. That's right. I always thought we could help. That's nice. You know? He's a good guy. What went away? There's, um, she's using the software, the Windows software, and there's a little toggle to the left to show between. Um, there's a big screen and a little screen for like when you're showing something, and there's a speaker. So the a visual, little, a yeah, between, between the camera and the, and it yeah. keeps disappearing for some reason on my laptop. Nice. And if, if you just exit the That's browser, why they need lots of IT people. There's you, lots of problems, just exit right? the browser and reopen it, it comes back. So, Ain't yeah, that wonderful? So we don't really know what makes it go away, but it just <laughs> goes away. Yeah. Do you need me to come log in again? How long do we have? Is it going to start for you? It's two minutes till five of. There's always time for breakdowns. I can't blame it on Windows this time. Magic fingers, you know, the car behaves when you take it to the shop, right? It's a good thing you guys in the room with us are all friendly, because you're seeing all of our wobbles. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna, I'm going to stand aside and you're going to stand over there, right? Yeah, it's within 30 seconds, yeah. Okay, our next presentation is from Daytona State College. Um, Chris Cameron is going to share with us their experience with courses they, they developed, and they're, right next. Is there a radio? I don't know how to Is that my picture? It's on, we're on the side of it. Has the, the, the two courses and mm -hmm. in advance too. This is a background. background okay. okay. Uh, I'm only going to talk about the one course. I was only told to talk about one course. That's right. Good. Because I'm not able to change it. Our next presentation comes from Daytona State College. We have Chris Cameron, a um, faculty member from their computer department, who's going to talk to us about their experience with um, course development and the FRC Tech grant program. Hi, like she said, I'm Professor Chris Cameron. And I, I did two courses, but I'm going to focus on one. And there's a lot of interest in it, and it's called the EGS 1000 on our system, which is professional performance for technicians. And there's been a huge feedback from industry. 
our whole degree teaches technical skills, and you would think that the people skills or professional skills would be common sense, and a lot of them are. But there's a lot of people that come from being young and being in the home and not, not being very uh, familiar with this environment. They're used to being uh, great on effort, not getting things done. And so this is a huge, huge area. And, and the number one complaint from industry is that they hire people that are very smart, but they are not problem solvers and they're not decision makers. So they have all this knowledge and they don't know how to actually apply it. So that's part of what I did with the grant is to improve a course that I'd already improved that previously mostly dealt with uh, interviews, um, how to negotiate, how to dress for just that very small part of your professional career. And so I've expanded it a lot. Uh, the second thing is the number one reason that people are let go is they can't get along with others. They can't get along with clients, they can't get along with their coworkers, or they can't get along with uh, leadership. And these, for most people, aren't hard. But if you're blue-collar background, you're used to obscenities are okay, or, I mean, there's just so many examples. Um, and I'm just going to go briefly over some of the things. Most of the curriculum, like I said, relates to technology. But I cover, the first thing I cover is goals and time management. Now, none of the seven things I'm going to mention have changed, but I'll show how they've changed in just a minute. And I do goals and time management first, and people are amazed at how much time they waste watching reality TV, doing just whatever, you know. And so if you have goals, you've got to think about people like Bill Gates and Steve Jobs had 24 hours in their day also. And they still made a difference in the world. Now, even if you just want to be a professional, you have to know how to organize your time. You can't be late to client meetings. You can't be late to different events. Uh, the second area is business communications. You might be grown up with email as a young person, or you might not be used to uh, email or phone calls in a professional environment, or speaking person to person to another person, or maybe leading a small team, or speaking uh, in front of management. And it, it's not a, a cop-out to be different than you were back in your neighborhood. It's just that's the language and the way business runs. People don't expect these other things to happen. And often... Uh, when I talk about communications, writing, grammar, it's like, oh, grammar, my goodness. But grammar is the quickest way to offend your client and lose business if you're sloppy. They, like, you're not worth it. I'm not going to spell check. I'm not going to even read my own messages. Critical thinking and analysis. One thing I learned going through college was how to think. You don't really learn that in high school. Some people don't. I had to pick all this up on my own. Uh, professional teamwork and leadership I mentioned. Job search, of course, I go into that, but also professional man, uh, management. You know, when you're working a profession, it's very different than working a, 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 a job in a factory or a labor job or, or digging or something like that. You have to be self-directed a lot of the time. And part of it is directing your own path through the career, finding things you like to do, finding ways you can help the organization. Uh, you don't want to be one of those people who say, well, I'll work for 40 years and what I've got to show for it. So the, it is really goes into a huge depth, but basically the whole course of introduction, every one of these seven sections could be a, a course in itself. And most of them aren't because there's not room in a curriculum for all this. So they're like health self, uh, self-help books, uh, a lot of things out there. The last one is happiness and professional success. And if you are good at something and not good at something else, if you get lots of training on this thing you're not very good at, you can only get a little better. But if you get training on what you're good at, what you're happy at, the sky's the limit. And that's what a lot of successful people have done. They figure out what, they're, what they like, what they're good at, and they can just go from there. So what we've done with the grant is, I was reading over the suggestions for the presentation, is, uh, and, and I worked with a, a designer that had a lot of great ideas, is we had the questions and we had discussion. It's all online. There's no textbook because no one textbook can really cover this. I have things from industry. I had videos from like Jack Welch of GE. Um, I had um, uh, articles on, on the web. And a lot of it I just made up and narrated based on content I got from all over. And what was really great about the grant is it allowed me to review it and really tune it up to a completely new level. And we came up with these, uh, like you think of them as word problems in math. But they were scenarios like people are using cell phones at work. It's become a problem. How would you deal with it? So you're solving a problem 
but you're also dealing with people. You're not going to say, no cell phones, you know, or uh, you'll have maybe areas or times you can use it. And uh, we also have an example. There's one for every main uh, item in the, in, the, uh, in the course. And one of them is on problem solving when you have a touchy political, internal political situation, but also a national safety issue. And it's based on uh, real-world events. And one of the events is you're a car designer, and you find out there's a fuel oil seal that's going to cause possibly injuries. And it's a highly promoted car. It's coming into production or uh, being released next week. What do you do? And some people say, you just pull the switch and stop it. Well, you can't. You're an engineer. You don't have access to that, so that's not a good answer. You would have to meet with other engineers, verify the problem, find a quick solution. But it's based on the Challenger disaster. You know, the engineers tried to stop it, and there was too much political pressure to keep going. So if you're in an industry, you know, what kind of, how, how do you make those kind of decisions? They're very hard. They're very ethical. You're dealing with people's lives sometimes. So I have one of those uh, word problems, and I call them an activity, and they're about one page of double spaced. And I set up the activity and what I expect. And I also expect, you know, excellent grammar in English uh, because, after all, They've already had the communications chapter by the time they get to some of these later ones. And they should be able to write at a good level. So in my, in my uh, thinking of this course, I was just looking at everything you see that happens. You know, um, I, I know somebody that had a, a co-worker that was get calls on her office phone. Oh, no, Mom, call me on the cell phone at work. You know, and sure enough, she got dozens of calls a day, and she's been gone for quite a while. Because when the time comes, you're going to kind of get rid of that. Some of the other interesting things they talk about is, like in the Jack Welch interview, they talk about the 20-70-10 rule, which is 20% of your employees are stars. They do a super job. 70% do a good job. It could do better. And 10% are really in the wrong place. They need to find another industry. They're not happy. They're just there. And I've seen it happen when a company gets sold. All the good people find jobs right away. And the ones that aren't very good, they're not sure what to do. So they just hang on because, oh, I've been going to work here. I don't have any imagination. So we're trying to arm our students with ways that even though they haven't had the experience yet and they think, well, why do we need to learn about leadership? You know, I'm just trying to get a job as an IT guy or IT gal or something. But, you know, you might be leading a team in six months to a couple of years. You don't know. So we try to equip them. with, And, again, they're, they're just common sense. So anyway, that's, that's kind of the lowdown on that. And, and the happiness thing at the end is just if you're happy, you tend to, uh, first of all, you're spending your life there, but also you tend to do a really excellent job. You're always looking to do uh, what Disney called a plus one. And by the way, Disney has the best customer service in the world, and I talk about him too in the course. But uh, the big things were adding those written uh, word problems, you might call them, or scenarios, and uh, they're pretty big projects. I give the students about two weeks to do each one, and they all overlap. Uh, so anyway, that is uh, kind of what I wanted to say today. And uh, if there's any questions or anything, uh, you can take those. If anybody had any questions on what we're doing. Any questions from the remote audience? Not so far? I'll ask one. So have you seen any of the students you've seen go through that course? Have you ever had any feedback? Have you ever had, had, had students come back and say, oh, I got my job and I, I thought about what I learned in this course? Have you ever had any feedback? It's interesting you say that because I have discussions each week, and I thought rather than have the last discussion that's end of the semester, I use that for feedback. I say, what was your favorite thing in the course, and what would you like to see added? And frequently, uh, they say, I never thought about this. I never realized how much time I wasted. And on the, t on the time, it also says, you know, important, urgent, some of the four quadrant things from Stephen Covey. And, and I reference lots of books. I use about 12 books as a reference in this. Um, and they say, oh, I really like the one about, you know, how to solve problems, because I never thought about analyzing it analytically. Uh, there's a, a lawyer that has a TV ad, and he's got a, a, a cowboy hat and an American flag and an eagle behind him. 
Well, none of those talk about legal services. For a, right, a left, brain, a left brain person, that doesn't tell you anything about his legal qualifications. But by God, it's America. You've got to sue your neighbor. You've got to get every dime. It's jackpot time. You know, so that just kind of, you know, it's American right to sue somebody. So you have these cues that, you know, just like, uh, you know, different armies have different symbols during war to empower them or, or icons. You have this in advertising. And people, you know, they get off track. They don't think logically. So I have a whole thing on analyzing uh, different, different things in the course. But in this feedback, they... Uh, they tell me all the most wonderful things. They're like, wow, this is the most valuable course I've had in college. Because I say, you know, like I said, the most likely reason for being fired is not following this. And we get pretty good reports from industry. We also, this is one of our core courses. So if you're in IT, you take this course. And also, we have instigated uh, over the last, you know, 15 years, internships. And I've only heard of one instance where somebody come in as a young person doing their own thing, learned all this cool stuff, and did exactly the same thing on the job they did at home and got in trouble because they were acting not like a professional. And when my boss came to me and said, what do we do about it? I said, we can teach them. Whether they use it or not, it's up to them. You know, there's people who go to college that decide that maybe they're just going to write a famous novel or something. So the feedback's been incredible with that. And, and I was going to bring a bunch of things in to read, but it's kind of self-serving. But there's a lot of things on the website. And uh, some people think that they would like to have, that, that was one thing that really surprised me, they'd like to have more time. they like to go into this in more depth. But almost each one of these, if you worked on it, could easily be a whole course. You could go into all how to do different things. Like phone skills. You, know, you call somebody up and you don't just say, hey, call me, click, which is what you do casually. You want to say your name and the phone number and a good time to call. People don't think about that. So the feedback's been great. Did you teach this course face-to-face -face or online? I started it face-to-face, -face, but there were so many things that were hard to bring to the classroom. And the thing about a discussion is people say, about one out of 20 people say, I wish it was face-to-face. -face. It is taught exclusively online, but I have taught it every, every two years or so. I teach it in the classroom. And the thing is that you don't get near the interaction. You'll, you'll have people that, in a discussion, they can read the other ones, and they get really, really involved, and they'll just print or type in a beautiful discussion. In the classroom, it's like, anybody want to talk about it? And you get, me, 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 you know? And a lot of people just sit, because they're used to being like watching TV. But when you're actually able to do that, plus people that might be self-conscious will post very um, interesting posts. You know, they normally wouldn't speak up in a crowd. Okay, and I think we do have a question from online. Yes, I might need you to repeat the question, but Betty asked if there are any textbooks for the course. Um, we have a, a question from Betty McTurk at Lake Sumter. She would like to know if you could share the specific textbooks that you use. Well, that's, that's interesting. Um, I tried to get textbooks. The only thing that came even close was help desk. But I took a bit out of many, many books. Some were on student success. Some were on, you know, analysis. Some were on, uh, a lot of these were motivational books, you know, like Phone Power. Um, the, you know, uh, Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Successful People. So I just uh, have lots of books like that I use, but I don't use them in the course. I reference them, and I always show a picture of the book on the slide. So if they want more information, they can go out and get the book. I even use the One Minute Manager, if you've ever heard of that. That's fantastic. You know, how to manage quickly and just address the problem. Don't blame the guy. Don't ride the guy or the gal. You just address the problem. You know, they're not a problem if their activities are. Well, if you would like to give us, like, your reading list, we could certainly attach it to this webinar, you know, as a handout for people later. Okay. Be happy to do that. So the question is, well, I created all the materials, like for the PowerPoints, I created PowerPoints based on the topic, came up with the basic things, but I narrate them. Because some of the feedback I get is some online courses aren't narrated, so they just slap a PowerPoint up. And they say they feel like I'm talking to them. 
because I just sit at home and quietly talk about it. I usually do it in one take, but you might be able to tell from my personality. If I want to do it, I'm going to do it. Um, as far as open source, I'm not really sure what that means. Um, what I do is we're in the process now of getting a second instructor because I'm kind of loaded up. I also am the primary instructor for computer repair, the A-plus computer repair, and that's getting pretty busy too. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow them to use all my content, and they just direct it and, and do the discussions and stu such like that because it's, it's, it's really too hard to recreate all the stuff and kind of silly. Um, but there are transcripts of it I, I've heard in the uh, hearing impaired center. We had a hearing impaired person take it, so there's transcripts of it. And I think I submitted those to David when I was doing the course development. I'm not sure. Okay. So he might have access to some so of that. So the question is, if this course is open source, yeah, and I'm going to let question, our, yeah. our grant instructional designer respond. Okay. Um, for uh, At least for the for the EGS uh, um, uh, uh, 1000, uh, um, all the materials that are uh, available for the core course are all open source. Um, uh, 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 now, for for anything that is added, then you know the the, uh, the 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 faculty member can add whatever they they, they would like to have on uh, on that course. And I, um, at least the materials that I got from 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 Chris at the time that we developed the course were open source. So at least for those. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the, um, so the EGS 1000 is available in the grant course repository that will be available to all of you, and all those courses follow the Department of Labor open source guidelines. We are later this morning going to review the process whereby you and any of your faculty can access those courses, and they do follow those guidelines. So the answer to the question is yes, they are open source, and it looks like they've also taken the steps to make sure that they have some um, tools and resources available for students with disabilities. Any other questions? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so the question, this question is, um, many of you who've been involved with the grant know that the grant has been exploring the idea of having virtual career development services as well. So the question is, could this course be used for that, for that initiative as well? And the answer is um, yes, we've actually used that course as a resource. The grant is, and we're going to hear about this later today as well, we're going to have a presentation on the activity with the grant on the career development front. And one of, we did provide this course as a resource um, because it, it's part of the professionalism, part of the preparation that helps them develop. So, so yes, we are, we are trying to connect the dots in that area as well. Any other questions? Any other questions? We did have one comment from Betty who thought it was Oh. I just have one other comment is that if you're going to use it as a resource for uh, job job placement is you really have to somehow convince them to really think while they're watching it. I have them watch it twice if they can. You can pause it and take notes, replay it if you're busy, you know, doing something. Um, and if you just skim through it, you think, oh, I know this, and you won't learn anything. But if you really delve deep into it and give it a lot of thought, I enjoy watching it every semester I teach it. It helps tune me up, and yet I assembled a lot of the content. So it really helps you think about these things. Um, Betty would like to know how many credit hours are offered through a course. Do I need to repeat it, Karen? I'm not sure that might complete the uh, The question is, how many credit hours is the EGS 1000 course? Uh, this course is uh, three credit hours. And we currently offer it online in a half semester format. So it's compressed time frame. But it's three, it's three semester hours, three credit hour course. And I think the most significant thing from what I've learned is that it's mandatory. It's not an elective. It's something your students must take, correct? That's right. We've had a few people that come from a professional environment, and basically I make them do the activities. And if they can do the activities, that shows me, because that really tells what's what. And I, I, I do have people that, that test out of it, but not too many. You know, most people don't have that kind of background. We do a lot of, at this particular campus, we do quite a bit of professional development. So we have people from industry that want to up their skills, you know, from the last five years. And uh, 
but a lot of people take the course. And uh, when you have that variety in the classroom, especially with the discussions, you can see other people's viewpoints. It, gives them, it, it really brings a lot to the classroom having the discussions. Okay, any other comments or questions? And once again, this course is available to all of you instantly. Yeah, just sign up. We got a website. Okay, anything else? Okay, we will take a short break and then we will come back with our presentation from Lake Sumter State College. <laughs>